Okay, so I recently um, bought a Rode NT1, which is this microphone I'm currently recording this video on. It's a pretty good microphone, but what I didn't realize at the time is that I bought it on eBay for like 200 bucks. It wasn't like, it wasn't expensive because like uh, when you look for a new Rode NT1 nowadays, the price are like $500 uh, if you go on Amazon. They're $500 Canadian, so that's pretty expensive. I bought it for 200 Canadian, so that's not that bad. Like for I say, so I thought, oh yeah, that's nice. The Rode NT1, that's better than the NT1A because I, I watched a lot of reviews. Um, they were reviewing the both mics and they were saying that the NT1 was better than the NT1A. But what I didn't realize at the time is that there's actually four versions of the NT1. And um, when I went to do this rabbit hole, I found out on the Gearslot forum that you could replace one of the capacitor in those mics. Uh, not the original one, the second version, because there are actually like four versions, which is very confusing. I, I, so it's the the gray one, kind of not metallic gray too. The smaller one. Uh, this one's pretty interesting because a lot of people uh, wanted to mod this one. It's similar to the first one they made, but in a different shape. It's pretty interesting. So I went on the, the Gersla forums. There were a review of this mic and some other mics and what I saw is that some people like to change the capsule of this mic. But when you go further uh, into the post, you, you can see that there's uh, Jim Williams. Uh, in this post it states that you can change uh, the capacitor in this mic. There's two filtering uh, capacitors so you can lower the high frequency bandwidth because when you look at the graph of this mic versus other mics uh, in this price range. Uh, it, it, it really sounds similar to the NT1A. You can see that the NT1 is a little bit flatter than the NT1, NT1A, which has a lot of bumps and some accentuated uh, trebles around 10,000 kilohertz to um, 20,000 kilohertz. But you can actually fix that with uh, rolling the capacitor in it. That's what I tried to do. I ordered some Wemo uh, caps, uh, some some like this. Those Wemo caps are there on Mouser. It took about a week to arrive, and I changed them here. And I'm gonna show you how you can also change them uh, while voice serving it. So I'm gonna show you the clips. So this is actually like the disassembly of the the microphone. What you need to do is there's two screws at the base of the microphone. You remove those two screws and then it just slides right off. You can just remove the, the, the components from their shell and you can easily access them. So right now what I'm actually doing is I'm removing um, the inside of the microphone from the shell. So this is gonna make me access the microphone um, components so I can desolder um, the capacitor which are marked C4 and C5 to replace them with my uh, capacitor of a higher value of capacitance. Or as mentioned by John Williams, the designer of the mic. So how I'm gonna remove them is basically, I'm gonna just take the take my iron I'm gonna put it to the um, through the legs of the capacitor and eat them and I'll use a desoldering pump to remove the the soldering then I'm gonna use some new soldering to remove them and it was pretty tricky I struggled a lot to do this these steps but I finally done it the the, the result was pretty good I'm pretty confident of my soldering skills <laughs> wasn't that bad as you can see here I desoldered them and what I found tricky was to solder them when when I, I went to solder them they always were falling so I took some piece of tape I taped the capacitor to the mic like some uh, electrical tape and then I solder into them that, that really helped soldering them it was a really good trick 
when I was finished, I just uh, screw everything back together and I'm just recording with it right now. Some other interesting fact is that I, uh, I made comparison before and after uh, recording this. I'm gonna make you hear the difference. This is a test of the unmodified older gray road NT1, not the NT1A nor the newer NT1. This is a test of the modified road NT1 with the Wima 1500 microfarad caps. Um, so I'm not sure if you can un hear it on YouTube, but to my ears and uh, actually to the program I'm using, it does not make a big difference. I'm telling you that from now. <laughs> um, I would not actually uh, risk doing this mod. You, you risk damaging the mic and it's not actually rewarding that much. I'm not sure it changed a lot of things. I'm going to show you why in a second. So uh, here is the original recording. I'm going to play it for you. Uh, I made. This is a test of the unmodified older gray road NT1, not the NT1A nor the newer NT1. So this is the original recording. As we can see, there's a peak at 10,000 10, kilohertz. Um, this is to be expected. I mean, there's nothing we can really do about that. Um, here's a, a frequency sweep of the microphone. Um, as you can see, there's a line here. I'm not sure why there's a line here. That's what I'm trying to find out. And well, it's pretty clean. I don't think there's some things here, but like that's my mouse click. As you can see, they're they're peaking around 20 kilohertz too. So this is the frequency sweep. I'm just gonna make you listen to it. Yep. Uh, the way I did it is just I put my headphones, which are Focal Elex. They're quite like sensitive headphones, and they have like a great frequency response. So this should be like the cl cleanest possible. So this is the the sweep I got with uh, without modifying anything. Um, then I did another uh, another recording with uh, the new caps, and here's what I I find interesting. As you can see, at 20 kilohertz, there's a line. I don't know what this line is. I can't hear it because like my hearing goes um, to about 19 kilo 1900 kilohertz uh, before I can't hear a thing. But um, I mean 19,000. Uh, sorry. Um, this is really weird because like there's definitely a line we can see it uh, in the spectrogram, but it wasn't there before. Like I'm seeing, it it, it wasn't really there before in the, the other recordings. I'm gonna make you hear now what I recorded. This is a test of the modified Rode NT1 with the Wima 1500 microfarad caps. So as you can see, um, nothing has really changed. Uh, um, here's my other frequency sweep. We can see clearly that is a line at 20 kilohertz. I don't know why there's a line at 20 kilohertz, but it's it's now right there. And if you look like at all my recording uh, that I did afterwards, there's a line at 20 kilohertz. So I don't know what this line is about, but to me it's just not wording. Uh, I I don't know. It, it didn't change the sound in a surprisingly better way. Um, uh, I didn't just change the sound uh, as I expected it would do. It's not not too much. Could have broken my mic too, so that's that's to be expected. And if I just play, um, let's say, from the five kilohertz to um, like twelve kilohertz, or some some region like that, to because um, like remember dip. The bump is at 10 kilohertz, so I'm going to play like 5 kilohertz to uh, to like 16 kilohertz. I'm going to play it here. So this is with the modified, you can see the line here. So this is the, what it sounds like um, there. And if I go, let's say here. This is non-modified. Um, so we'll do the same thing. I'm going to select uh, five kilohertz to 16 kilohertz range, about about this. And it's going to play it. In the s 
So I'm not sure if it's the recording, but when I read it, it like it's pretty similar. There's not a lot about this that changed. Like it's going to the same same things. Like um, it's, it's very similar. There's not a lot that changed. So that's quite sad. I thought it would change a lot more the sound. I mean. That was to be expected. And that was my experiment. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was pretty uh, time consuming and useless. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I thought it would sound different. Don't, don't, don't fuck up with your mic there. Do this in a nice way, though. No. Don't screw with them. So have a, have a nice day, guys. And uh, I'll see you sometime. I have some project for this channel. I have to um make some film videos like old school uh, retro film film stock videos that that would be fine but i'll see you another day